More women than ever before have control of capital, but many of them do not have a big picture perspective on how to manage their money. Mother and daughter duo Miriam Neff and her daughter Valerie Neff Hogan have written Wise Women Managing Money. It's expert advice on debt, wealth, budgeting, and more. We'll meet them today here on Babby's House. Stay tuned. Babby's House is coming to you right now. Babby's House, Babby's House. Every day is filled with possibilities at Babby's House. Welcome. Welcome to Babby's House, where everybody is a member of the family. That's what we've been saying for many years, and it still holds true. You are so welcome here at Babby's House, and thanks so very much for joining me today. I'm honored to have two of my dearest friends uh, that I've known and uh, admired their ministries and admired them for many years. And they are a mother and daughter duo, Miriam Neff and her daughter, Valerie Neff Hogan. And together they have written a great book to help women, women manage their money. The name of the book is called Wise Women Managing Money, Expert Advice on Debt, Wealth, Budgeting, and More. Welcome Miriam and Valerie. How are you doing today? So happy to have you on the show. I'm so honored to be invited into Babby's house. Absolutely. So good to so see you. So glad to be here. Oh, it's so good to see you both, Valerie and Miriam, and I'm just happy to have you both on the show. Well, I want to jump right in and talk about the book because the, uh, you two working together is a phenomenal duo, but talk to me about why two busy women, particularly a mother and daughter duo, would write a book about money. Well, I have had a widow's ministry now since Bob's been in heaven. And one of the second most important questions I would get from women, troubling questions, had to do with money. And I was always going to Val, who happens to be a lawyer and a CFP and a few more other things, saying, what about this? What about this? And so we realized we need to go back before people become single, whether it's divorced or whatever. All women need to understand money and have a biblical foundation. So Valerie, enter the discussion. So That's there you are. That's true. Yes, we just kind of, I would say mom would pitch me some questions over the backyard fence. And we just kept hearing some of the same stories and some of the que same questions over and over. So this book almost came out as a FAQs. <laughs> yes. Well, more women today are managing family as single or widowed or divorced. And so this subject is more is becoming more and more uh, pertinent. Valerie, can you tell me why it is so important for women to know how to manage their money? Oh, where to start? I mean, one of the things is we will manage it. If you look at the statistics, about 50% of women are single now, and that's for a lot of reasons. Either they're never marrying or they become widowed or divorced or some reason. Um, so we are managing it. You can look at all these statistics. Uh, women are managing about 50% of the United States wealth. Those numbers range somewhere between maybe 35 to 50%, but that's not just the family budget. That's wealth, like private equity, venture capital, when you walk down the street and see giant buildings. So we tend to not think of it that way, but um, for many reasons, we're managing that kind of money. Um, the other reason is that 80% of the time with married couples, he will visit heaven before she will. So again, we will be managing it. The question is, are we equipped, confident, and ready to go? Well, this is a, a very important subject because uh, more women are in control of their families. They're raising their children alone. Even women that are retired are raising or are finishing life uh, alone and managing their own money. So this perspective that both of you have is our two unique perspectives. So, so let's start with you, Miriam. Can you uh, talk to me and give me an overview of what you contribute to the book? Well, first of all, one thing Valerie and I both agree on, and she's a numbers nerd and I'm a word nerd, so we're different, but we agree biblical foundation first. And after the topic of love, the next most uh, frequent topic in scripture is money and stuff. So we have a biblical perspective. It's not ours. It's God's 
entrusted to us as a steward, Matthew 25. And Valerie and I are absolutely together on that. The foundation has to be there for everyone, whether it's a married couple or whatever. So there are some very basic principles that Scripture says that you've got to follow. They are countercultural, by the way, and I'll just name the first one. The first one is the Scripture says, till your field first and then build your house. Now we get a mortgage on a big house and hope our income increases to cover it. It's called debt, or it's, it's the reverse thing. The culture says that so loudly. So Valerie and I, are we're speaking up. So mom's got years of wisdom, and she's also got her counseling background. So she brings that all the years of faithfulness and study of the scriptures and that counseling background to bear, and the experience with hundreds, if not thousands of widows over 15 years mm -hmm. worth of uh, widows ministry. So... Well, um, talk to us, Valerie, about what it is that you contribute and your perspective on women managing their money. Talk to me about what it is you bring to the book. Yeah, so my husband and I have done um, a counseling for uh, benevolence counseling for folks. So we studied under um, the, the information coming out of Christian Financial Concepts. Now, that's old school. That was Larry Burkett there from the Atlanta area. Um, and Ron Blue, and so some of that biblical wisdom on stewardship. So we did that and did that as a ministry together for many years, but then, uh, then with my law and finance, and now I work with givers and folks on their budget and financial management, so I bring that training um, to bear. So mom has the wisdom, the counseling, has a lot of kind of that psychology behind what's happening, and I kind of bring that... Um, you know, institutional knowledge of this is how investments work, this is how debt structuring works, this is what can happen, this was can what happen legally uh, to somebody when they run into issues. So we have a unique combo here. Absolutely. Miriam, as we've been discussing, your perspective on money management and Valerie's perspective on money management are two um, vast uh, and different perspectives, and that's so important for us to address because a, a widow and her perspective on finances versus a young single, uh, maybe a, a young girl in her, a young woman in her 20s would be um, a different perspective. So can you talk to us about these, um, these two different perspectives and what would be the difference in how a senior might approach her financial picture and a single woman might approach, or a young single woman might approach her financial picture? Can you tell, talk to us a little bit about that, Miriam? Oh, sure. And one of the things that we do in the book, we make it really practical and easy. Yes, we talk about terms and have definitions and all that, but here's how easy it is. And both of those women, the young woman with her first job, the widow, they have four basic things that they have to do. They have to know what's happening. They have to own it. They have to like it or change it. So that young woman starting her job has to know what's coming in. And so does that woman who, like me, after Bob went to heaven, my financial reality had changed. We need to know it. Some people are on autopilot doing without knowing what's coming in, what's going out. So you have to know it. Then we say, own it. Do you like it? For the widow, she may need to size down in her home. For this young woman with her first job, she may decide she can't get that fancy car she wanted. You have to own it. Is that, is that biblical? And then you like it and say, oh, wow, this is great. I can roll with this. Oops, not so much. I better change it. So the, but the difference, they both have to do that same thing, but it's very different because the widow may have baggage or debt or things that, you know, like she and her husband did together, whatever. Now God has entrusted it with her only. And that's her why for both of them. The why is the same. It's God, so do it well. Yes. Um, Valerie, a lot of women, regardless of age, and not just women, but uh, men as well, but since we're talking about women managing money, let's, let's continue the conversation there. But so many women are intimidated by f finances and terms and um, the word fiduciary just scares the life out of me. I don't even know what that means. I mean, there's so many big terms that can be intimidating. So how do we begin to take the fear out of managing money, Valerie? 
Yeah, so I think part of it is some of the, in the industry, there's just jargon. And maybe it's intentional, maybe it's not. Either way, these things are knowable. Um, so a fiduciary is somebody who has to treat their client in their best interest and look after them. So they have a duty to look after that person and steward their money in that person's best interest, not the advisor's. So now you know what a fiduciary is, Babby. So check that off the box. You feel confident. Right? So just like that, these terms are knowable. And really, we don't need to all be Wall Street geniuses to get the fundamentals of, of budgeting and saving and even investing down. Um, so I would say just get started. Um, and also know, I think what's really happened, the helpful for women that I talk to is, I have never met somebody in this industry ever who's saying, you know, I'm crushing my budget, got it, totally done, I'm all good, and all my investments are fabulous. I've got this down. Nobody says that. So if we're feeling a little intimidated, so does everybody else at some point. We're all in that together. Some are a little seasoned and have been doing that longer, and maybe they're mastering one area. But this is a thing just kind of like all other disciplines. It's so daily. Yes. We're all in that. So don't be afraid to ask. I think sometimes we're intimidated to say, I'm going to sound kind of dumb if I ask, what is that? What is the S&P? Wait, what is the NASDAQ? What is the fiduciary? Just ask. Yes. Half a dozen people don't know it either. Yes. Just like when I open the hood of my car, I have no idea what's in there. <laughs> like, uh, you know, because I'm not working with that every day. So don't be embarrassed. Just go in. Well, you are, uh, you and Miriam are a very safe place to ask questions. And the book even addresses, although you don't give recommendations, but you do elaborate on in investments or what the, what kind of investments are out there. Can you elaborate on, the, on that a little bit more? Well, I can because I had never been involved with that when, until Bob went to heaven. And then Val says I brought home books from the library taller than I was, but I, don't, I think that's an exaggeration. I started to learn and I love investing and God has blessed that. If I can learn it as a word nerd, anybody can oversee. And we have different criteria that are important to us. Let me give you an example of something really practical in the book. Valerie and I like to do pictures because some of women are visual learners. So you talk about different kinds of stocks you can own. And there's small cap, mid cap, and large cap. But so we have a picture in there of a toddler, a teenager, and an adult. There it is right there. The toddler's a small cap. The teenager is the mid cap and the adult is the large cat. So ask yourself a question, mom or niece, aunt or whoever, what's gonna go, who's gonna grow the fastest? Oh, the toddler, so if I want growth, let's buy small caps. Oh, who's gonna fall down more? Oh, the toddler. So in other words, there's the risk and reward right there, and it's a picture. So mid cap, now we're not making budget recommendations or invest. But for example, a large cap is like a good old Procter & Gamble or people who make toilet paper. It's an adult, they've been around a long time. And you know what, they're probably gonna kick out some dividends. Again, we don't make recommendations, but for someone thinking, oh, I'd like to know about that, go look at the pictures in the book. You're gonna get a kick out of them. Cause then it's like, okay, we know that. We know small cap meeting, mid cap, large cap. That's a wonderful example. That immediately, I, I guess I'm a word picture person because the moment you started talking about that, the lights began to come on. And so uh, knowledge uh, can cast out fear and help us to become more uh, or less intimidated. Well, thank you so very much. Let's talk about uh, generosity and the generosity of God and what does it mean to be generous? Um, Either one of you that, that feels more equipped on answering that question um, can chime in on that question. But let's talk about the generosity of God. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we're generous and want to be generous. And we feel that pull because we're in our, our maker's image. And he's generous, right? For God so loved that he gave. And so it's fundamental to who he is. And it's fundamental to who we are in him. So I like to say, you know, we want to be people that go from struggling to stable to surplus, but not to be a bottleneck. You know, we're not just 
it's not all for us, right? I mean, that's a flow through. The Lord has, it's all his stuff and we can get it to his purpose. And we find joy with that flow through, right? So I would say that's fundamentally the way I think about generosity is that it's a joy. When we do that, it's a joyful thing and we can get really good at it. I mean, we can think about, and I like to think about when we're told to think about whatever's good and lovely or pure, what if we didn't worry or think about as many of the things that we think about? What if we were thinking more about what our next generosity move? Can we tip more? Can we say thank you more? Can we, and we can get good at, um, you know, being generous with big stuff too. You know, we can grow in that, start small, just get started. And then, I mean, we can, we can get to be, you know, hashtag boss girl, like <laughs> giving with assets and stocks and even end of life. I mean, we can do that pervasive in many, many ways. So it's so exciting, but isn't that pure and lovely and good things to think about than some of this other stuff we've got to think about. And we get there by being wise and good stewards all, all the way through. That's so good. And we are living in a day and age where so many people can be the benefactors of our generosity and we can give generously or live generously and in small ways. And sometimes we think, well, we don't have much to give, but you'd be surprised, surprised even in a small way, how generous one can be. Well, let's talk about something that is applicable across the board, regardless of our age or even our income, and that is the impact of fraud. Can either of you, um, let's start with you, Miriam, because um, it seems like sometimes older um, people, particularly widows, people who live alone, are sometimes um, uh, a target for fraud. Can you talk to us about how to be more aware in that area? It's it is so real and it's really disgusting. Someone attempted to get my husband's life insurance from me. And this person was in a church. Now, just because it's in the garage doesn't mean it's a car. And there are many wonderful people in churches and we can get, but we need to have other people that we run things by. And as Valerie would say to me, if someone has an idea for your money, and I'm thinking of a young woman whose husband died and someone said, oh, you've got to take that life insurance and put it in this product and save it for their college. That product had that individual making a lot of money off of it. Bad idea. So Val says, no, just say no, push the pause button. If you have a great idea, it'll be a great idea tomorrow after I've talked with the people in my life with wisdom. I talked to Val. I talked to other people. I have gotten so well, more than annoyed when women contact me and say, this person came to my home and got my husband's clothing before, while I was at the funeral home. Or, mm -hmm. I mean, the way to take advantage of people is when they're vulnerable, do stuff. This is something that we have to be on high alert from, or this is no more nice lady, no more nice lady. I need to have a three to six month saving plan and I need to put away $5 a week for that if I haven't started. I need to be giving. If I haven't been doing that, $5 a week. Your confidence grows and you're putting money where it belongs instead of giving it to a fraudster. Yes. Yeah, and I would say these are aggressive tactics. There's some common things, like it's a hurry. Uh, mm -hmm. They don't want to have, you to have time to check with an advisor. And I like to say for anybody in your life, if they're coming up close, like it's an affinity fraud, like we're friends or, you know, they're going to try to get up close or apply to your sym sympathetic nature. How do they behave when your answer is no? Because they need to be okay with no. I think that's a litmus test. Do they really love you? Are they really your buddy? Are they really a great neighbor? Whatever they great advisor, whatever it is, they need to be okay with the answer of no. And so... Um, if they're not, you know, if you say, well, I'm not going to do that, but thanks. If you start to see that ugly side, I mean, that's kind of a hallmark of fraud is that need it quick, got to do it now. It's urgent, you know, pressure tactic and not okay with no. Yes. You know, this is such a huge subject. And in the book, you all address things like credit cards, managing debt, insurance, loans and contracts, budget busters, avoiding fraud, and so many other subjects having to do with finances. So how can we get more information about the book? Well, first of all, it's on Amazon.com at a nice discount right now. Mm -hmm. And we'd be happy for you to order it there. 
I know uh, through Moody Publishing, it's a Moody published book, so you can get it there. But Amazon is quick, and again, it's a nice discount. And the other thing is, uh, on our book, it shows a website that you can contact us. And we have videos there, five-minute videos on each of these at wisewomenmanagingmoney.com. So let's say you don't want to read the book. You can come and look at our lovely faces in my family room. We had to close the door to keep the dog out. <laughs> well, that is a wonderful, wonderful resource. And thank you all so very, very much for being my guests. Again, I've been talking today with Miriam Neff and her daughter, Valerie Neff Hogan. And the name of the book is called Wise Women Managing Money. Thank you all so very much for being my guest today. Thank you for inviting us. Great to be with you, Mavi. Absolutely, and it's great to see you again and great to be with you. And thank you so very much. Again, the name of the book is called Wise Women Managing Money, Expert Advice on Debt, Wealth, Budgeting, and More. Well, we're going to take a quick break, and after this break, I'll come back and I'll sing for you, so don't go away. We'll be right back after these messages. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's show with Miriam Neff and Valerie Neff Hogan talking about women managing their money. I hope that's been a real blessing to you today. I hope you'll reach out to me at my official website at babby.com. And there at babby.com, you'll find all kinds of wonderful resources to encourage you in your faith, great music, wonderful books and Bible studies to help you, particularly women, in growing in a stronger in the Lord. While you're there at the website, click the Listen Live button and that will launch Babby Mason Radio where you can hear beautiful music and encouraging words around the clock. Well, I want to close today's show with one of my favorite songs. It's a wonderful worship song to help us give glory and honor to God. And it's entitled Every Praise. Will you just worship God with me and celebrate the joy of the Lord? Every praise.